Hi, I'm Tom Woods, and you're listening to the Libertarian Christian Podcast. Welcome to the show that gets Christians thinking about faith and politics. Get ready to challenge the status quo, expand your imagination, and tackle controversy head on. Let's stand together at the intersection of faith and freedom. It's time for the Libertarian Christian Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Libertarian Christian Podcast, a project of the Libertarian Christian Institute. I'm your host, Doug Stewart, and we have a familiar voice on with us. We have Carrie Baldwin. She's a contributor at LCI, and she also has her own website at mereliberty.com. She's an independent researcher, writer, and podcaster, and she has a degree in philosophy. She is here to talk to us today about a new service she is providing through her website. Carrie, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Doug, for having me. So if our listeners haven't heard your episodes on abortion, uh, actually, I think it was two episodes that you did on abortion with us, Mm -hmm. um, then they need to go back and listen to that. So you are you are like the person I talk to when it comes to abortion. And so you have a website Mm -hmm. and it's called MereLiberty.com. Tell our listeners about your website just in case they haven't uh, visited. Sure. So, yeah, the the website is mereliberty.com. My whole mission with Mere Liberty has been to challenge and rethink our paradigms for understanding society. And that's that's with the with the goal of encouraging individual freedom and responsibility within our own spheres of influence. Now, my writing and research is obviously geared towards libertarian philosophy, also reformed theology and things like that. But the main thrust of the of the website is to challenge and rethink paradigms. And, you know, that's one thing that I've, I think I've successfully done with abortion and would like to do with other topics. So, yeah, that's, that's what Mary Liberty is all about. Yeah, you know, you said you've successfully done that with abortion. I think it, uh, you have a, you have a badge in your, on your, well, you have a badge. I don't know where you might put your badge here, but it's <laughs> it's online. You can watch Carrie debate Walter Block online about the issue of abortion. So I, this this episode isn't about your your the Soho Forum <laughs> debate, but if right. you want to do like the one minute promo of that, go ahead. <laughs> Oh man! Well, the debate was was this past December in New York. Um, it was a absolute wonderful experience, um, and I think the the major takeaway that I that I can see from that debate is that it was it was the most pleasant debate, abortion debate you could possibly imagine, mm-hmm. and just went went really well. I've had tons of great feedback from both sides of the aisle on that, and um, so yeah, it's worth checking out. Yeah, I happened to be there. It was a really great experience, um, great venue. I just loved every minute of it. it. If an amicable abortion debate is an oxymoron, no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> so. right. That's right. It was great. Okay, so go listen to it, the SohoForum.org. Carrie did an amazing job. And so let's talk, let's go, let's go back to your website and the <laughs> new courses that you're bringing up. Why are you adding courses to your, your blog and your podcast uh, array of things that you offer? Well, articles are are one thing, even debates are one thing because you're getting one person's opinion. You're getting one person's perspective of of challenging the world, uh, which is helpful and useful. But I've always wanted to produce something that helps encourage other people to challenge and rethink their own paradigms. And that's where I came up with the idea for Mayor Liberty courses. And of course, online learning is It's a huge platform, but there's many different ways to do it. And I had just been toying with with this idea for a very long time. And I finally came down to this idea of doing Socratic seminars online. And I've done Socratic seminars before. In fact, I've done them with with kids from elementary all the way to, to high school. And it's just loads of fun. But one reason why I'm doing this now is because I've observed from, you know, this this lockdown related to COVID-19, I've I've learned a few things. And the first is that we very much need human interaction. Uh, and social distancing is not only something that I think is impossible to achieve in the strictest sense of the term, but it can also be dehumanizing. And we have technology that allows us to engage online, you know, by social media or video web chat or whatever the case may be. 
Um, and that's sort of a double-edged sword. We've we've seen through social media that that can sort of exacerbate the worst parts of our humanity. Like, you know, Twitter is often referred to as a cesspool. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's also brought us together. It's brought the world together in ways that I don't think we could have ever conceived before, which actually encouraged communication and compassion and mm-hmm. understanding and things like that, which is something that, that we need. And so my seminars, these seminars that I'm going to start offering are done online. Usually Socratic seminars are are done only in person, but these are going to be done online in order to leverage the positive aspects of virtual connections and so that students of my seminars can take these skills out and use them in interactions with other people, both online or in person. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that like a lot of students and, and, you know, I've, we become homeschoolers during this time, sort of. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had one child uh, at home most of the time anyway. And we've been spending a lot more time with them. And we have learned that to get them to think critically mm-hmm. is something that's really, really beneficial. Like we've actually seen in the, let's see, it's been now about seven or eight weeks. And we've actually seen the benefits in that short amount of time to helping yeah. them think critically. Like we've been doing a certain method, which I know you're you're following a similar curriculum because I've gotten a preview of what you're doing. Uh, right. <laughs> I know you're doing something very similar to what we're doing, but we're doing it on our own and not Socratically. But critical thinking is so important. Yeah. Why Why do you think that's so important? And prob- probably very lacking, especially, you know, I mean, goodness gracious, you could go on Facebook for five minutes today and realize that. But right. what's, the real, what's the real thing behind there? Well, every human being is, is rational, but that doesn't mean that all of our conclusions are well-reasoned. And so critical thinking is a skill that is that is both learned and something that we have to practice. And we have to keep practicing, other we, otherwise we lose it. So in order for human beings to have well-reasoned rationale, we need to know how to think about the information that we're exposed to. And that's that's another, you know, another benefit to the internet is that we are exposed to a ton of information, but now mm-hmm. we need to be able to analyze it and and really get to the bottom of things ourselves in order to make, you know, the right decisions in in our own case. So again, critical thinking is a skill. We have to learn it. And it's not difficult to learn because we're not, I think we're naturally inclined to this, this, you know, making or choosing our means based on our desired end goal, which is essentially what, what critical thinking, you know, leads to. And so we have a natural propensity to this, but it's, it's nonetheless a skill that, that needs to be learned and and practiced. So, you know, the, the upside is if you've never acquired the skill, you can still learn it. If you did acquire the skill, then there's always a need to continue practicing it. And then the one of the huge benefits then that we that we can get from that is that the sort of tribalism and polarization that we're experiencing, which I think is due to a lack of critical thinking in society, that can start to diminish over time. Because then we don't have to, I mean, the the tribalism and the polarization tends to, at least as far as I've seen, tends to come from people being afraid of new ideas, being afraid mm-hmm. of new information, or or thinking about things that that they've never considered before. It's sort of, you know, fearing the unknown yeah. uh, sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, I would say that a lot of our listeners here are readers of some kind, you know, like they like to read lots of articles, they like to read books. And, you know, you and I have read some of the bigger libertarian works that are pretty, pretty dense, some of them, Mm -hmm. and some of them are just lengthy, you know, because they're longer arguments, or they just have a lot in them, right? Right. I can imagine, you know, we could sit by our fireplace and read a couple books, you know, by Mises and Hayek, and then we can, you know, we can even entertain the ideas of the other side, whatever that might be, you know, let's Mm -hmm. read a little bit of Milton Friedman and the Monetarists and read some Krugman and read some uh, Keynes or whatever it might be, right? So we, we we sit by ourselves, we read a book. And we've read through all these things and we come to our conclusion that, you know, Ludwig von Mises was right and they're all wrong or something like that, right? Right, right. And we can fool ourselves into believing that we've critically thought through stuff. Exactly. But what we haven't done is we haven't really necessarily practiced it. 
Yeah. And so I think that's where it sounds to me like where the the Socratic method and what you're going to do gives the people the experience of practicing it rather than just being like, hey, here's what it looks like to do critical thinking. Go pretend you're doing it. Right. Yeah. Well, and the Socratic method, for, for those who are not familiar with it, it was created by Socrates. Obviously, that's where the word Socratic comes from. And Socrates, what he did to teach people things, because he felt like he couldn't teach anybody anything. They had to learn things on their own. But what he used was a series of open-ended questions to facilitate deep thinking. And that's really a useful tool because we can we can look at something like Mises, you know, who who talks about why, let's see, for example, why groups don't act, right? Only mm-hmm. individuals act. Well, mm-hmm. why? I mean, if I were to just glance at the world and the way things are happening now, it certainly seems like groups might be acting, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. So, so being able to dive into that into that idea is is useful and open-ended questions that are geared towards finding out why that's true, why only individuals act and groups do not is is super helpful for not only you understanding it, but um and uh, Mortimer Adler, for, uh, who wrote the book, uh, How to Read a Book, he talks about taking ownership of an idea. And it, of course, it's not ownership in the sense of property ownership like libertarians talk about, but it's it's the idea of sort of consuming that idea and making it your own and something that you can apply, you know, outside of yourself. And that's really what, that's what learning really is. And that's the aim of the Socratic method is for you to really internalize and consume those ideas and figure out, you know, which ones are actually true according to reality and which ones aren't. So what does this look like for you to deliver something online? I mean, what are the age groups? I mean, how is it, how is it formatted? What can people expect? So I, I would want a lot of people to come and do this because I mean, I would want my own kids to do this. Mine are a little younger for the group that you're in, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, who knows? We will, we want we want to promote this, and I want people to kind of sort of visualize what can they expect, like how long is it? Yeah, um, you know what can they expect from you? What can they expect to do on their own? That kind of thing. Well, I want to keep it rather simple and straightforward, and so the way I've I've done it is I've divided. So this is called a Liberty Seminar, and I've divided it up according to age groups. So we have middle schoolers, high schoolers, and then adults, and I have I have allowed room for the opportunity of allowing younger students into into the courses on sort of a case by case basis. I mean, I have I have spoken to high school students who are really at an adult level. I've spoken to elementary school students who can, you know, hang with the middle schoolers. So, I do want to be a little bit flexible in that, but that's how it's it's divided up. And so there's there's three seminars then, this, the middle school seminar, the high school seminar, and the adult seminar. And they go for 15 weeks at a time. And the reason why it's 15 weeks is because it usually takes about six to eight seminars for students to really get used to the method. It's very interactive, but we also will be uh, sort of switching off and taking turns between being an active participant and in and participating in the dialogue and then being in more of an observer of of what's going on because those are those are two different ways of of evaluating it. So uh, at any rate, I've set this up so that there's one lesson a week and the lesson is roughly 30 minutes at a time, uh, which you'll do at your own leisure and it'll be a reading of some kind or listening or watching to uh, watching an audio or video presentation. Mm-hmm. I'll include some extra, you know, helps for what maybe we're focusing on that that week. So the first week we're going to really talk about um, identifying the purpose of, you know, why an article or a book or a video was done. And so with that lesson will be some some helpful guides in helping the students to think about what the lesson is before we actually get to the Socratic seminar of it. Mm-hmm. So the actual Socratic part of it will take place on Saturdays and they will be 45 minute long sessions. And that is, that's really the, you know, that's really the thing that that you're buying into with the seminar, um, with this course is that interactive part. Mm -hmm. And so 
you know, it does require a personal commitment by the students. And in order for this to be effective, we do need to have a minimum of five students registered for each class, but it will be uh, capped out at 15 for each. So that's 15 middle schoolers, 15 high schoolers, and 15 adults. And then, so at the beginning of of each 15-week session that we do, each student will receive an onboarding guide which discusses what to expect, how the rules work, what my role is as a coach, because I'm not going to be lecturing anybody, and what the students' roles are. And then, um, like I said, these are going to be live. They're going to be done live. We are, I'm, I am using Zoom. And I know that uh, in the past there was um, some some security concerns with Zoom, mm-hmm. uh, which they have actually come out and made some huge upgrades in order to really secure their site in a better way. And uh, that will all be available on my website for for people to check out. Let's see what else. Oh, after the 15 weeks are up, what I want to be able to do is take uh, volunteers from from each of the, the sessions, um, if we have enough, and do a, a final Socratic seminar where we have a mixture of middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults all interacting in a multi-generational way. And I think I, I, I've seen it happen before, and it's just it, it's, it's really a fun thing to see the different age groups interact with one another. So that's essentially how, how it's going to work. So you, you said that you need content in order to do the Socratic method. So, so far we've been talking about these sort of your method and, and reasons for doing things, but I know you're also excited about the content that you're mm-hmm. going to be doing. And, and you've shared with me what the content is. And I'm like, I'm excited too, because <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, we're using some of the stuff that you're using and it's, yep. it's just phenomenal material. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm not just giving false praise to these people who've written these materials and books and stuff. The, these things, like I've actually experienced them and they're just amazing. So, Get into that a little bit because I think that is if if the material doesn't appeal to the students, they might not even care about the method. Maybe yeah. they do. Maybe they. But that's an abstract. A, a lot of times, I would say that like, you know, oh, I need critical thinking skills. Well, why? Right. You know, it's like, well, because you know, you know. But it's like, hey, do you want to learn about this? Yeah, I'd like to learn about that. I don't know. It just seems like it might. Both of them have appeal in different ways. Yeah. Um, but the material that you know, when people get in glimpse of the material it gets even gets them more excited i think maybe, maybe i'm wrong about that depending on the student uh but tell us about the content well i i really hope that this this content is appealing and exciting to other people actually what i ended up uh, i started trying to figure out what it was going to be for the middle schoolers and i'll talk about the middle schoolers in just a minute because mm-hmm. well at any rate I gotcha. um <laughs> but I used the the curriculum that I came up or the content that I came up with for the middle schoolers to to kind of help me figure out what I was going to do with the high schoolers and the adults. So the high schoolers, we're going to do a combination of lessons from uh, Robert Murphy's book for young economists. And we're going to be using uh, some of Sean Malone's out of frame videos, um, which discuss the principles of liberty using pop culture. And I think those are really fun and make some of these more, these topics which can come across as dry and boring and and uninteresting can really make them tangible and Mm -hmm. real and something that we can get excited about. That's what we're going to be starting off with the high schoolers. For the adults, we're going to be going, we're going to be doing a couple of things with the adults. The book that we're going to be going over there is Murray Rothbard's For a New Liberty. But the first couple of uh, sessions, we're going to be talking about sort of the psychology of what's going on right now. So we're going to be talking about manipulation, what is what it is and what it isn't, and how to deal with it. And then we'll be jumping into, you know, some of these, these principles that Murray Rothbard talked about. Mm-hmm. And that too, I'll be incorporating videos and, and things like that. And then finally, the middle schoolers, which I'm really, really excited about, um, we're going to be doing all of the Tuttle Twins books. So uh, Connor Boyack is giving me a wonderful deal, although he wanted to make sure that I said that he's not endorsing this. 
maybe sometime he will, but um He's he's gotta endorse it someday, Carrie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to push him just a little bit, but no, at no, any it's rate, all good. he needs to say it first, I'm sure. I but, understand. To be future endorsed by Connor Boyack. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, at any rate, I really love if if you guys don't know about the Tuttle Twins books, they are amazing books. They are mm. based they are based on these books from just giants in the liberty movement, Murray Rothbard, Ludwig von Mises, uh, John Taylor Gatto, and they are beautifully illustrated and wonderfully written stories which teach these principles in a really fun way. My kids love reading them. And so Connor's giving me a great deal. Basically, all of the middle school students will get the Tuttle Twins complete series plus the workbooks. Mm. We won't be incorporating the workbooks into the seminar, but parents will certainly be able to incorporate those. I'll, I'll say from my angle, the workbooks are a great plus. Um, you know, mm-hmm. during some of this time, we've we've spent family time and we've read the Tuttle Twins books to them and they would do the workbooks. While, and our, our kids are ages 8 through 12 and they would like do the workbook stuff because it's kind of, you know, it's things like mazes or connect the dots and fill in the colors and things like that. But it like it, it leads to a lesson. Yeah. Um, and those they do while we're reading the story. And it's it's really, really cool to see kids like really get it. Um, it, yeah, I mean, I yeah. can't say enough positive things about the Tuttle Twins. And since we've had this time to do this, my wife has just been like gung ho about them. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just been, it's just been a great, great resource. Yeah. So that's, that's the content that, that we're going to be working off of. And I mean, again, I just want to reiterate with the Socratic method, the idea here is to challenge the ideas that are being presented in this content. And so we will be in the process of that, we'll be testing these ideas against the opposing ideas because, you know, it it's not useful for us to be lectured at and told what to believe. And so at any rate, this is going to be a really great opportunity to just dive deep into, into these ideas and these books and the, and sources. So this has got to be worth like thousands of dollars, right? <laughs> so you're going to be charging, you know, thousand dollars a student or something, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Yeah. With I inflation. doubt it's going to be that exciting, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe after all the bail. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. No. Um, I'm starting out with a price point of of two hundred dollars per student, but I really want to get people excited and on board with this. And so for, for this first launch, this June launch, which uh, registration is going to be closing on June 1st so that we can start on June 15th. But I'm offering a 35% discount for everybody signing up. So that's a $70 savings. So yeah, that'll that's what, $130 per student. So normally it'll be $200 per student. And for this June launch, it's it's going to be 35% off. Well, that's an appealing price. You can't pass that up. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you, you know, you said earlier it's limited to 15 students. So, mm-hmm. and, and this episode is airing just just a little bit before June 1st. So, listeners, go out, check out mereliberty.com and check out the courses um, and sign up. And tell your friends to sign up and yeah. get their kids to sign up. I mean, obviously, like little communities could have their own little mere liberty classrooms. Yeah. Um, and you know, Carrie could be like, Hey, you're that community in, you know, Oklahoma that's learning learning the Tuttle twins or whatever. That'd be great. So yeah. Is there any um anything else people need to know about signing up or like what if they just can't swing it? Is it is there anything going on there? Yeah, so there are a couple of things that I'm doing. First of all, I am going to be waitlisting. If I get more than 15 students, I will be waitlisting those students. And so if you get on there and it's sold out, then sign up for the waitlist because if I get enough students, I will open up a second set of seminars at the discounted rate. Now, I am offering um, in each of these seminars, so one middle schooler, one uh, high schooler, and one adult session, I'm offering a a free session for someone experiencing financial hardship. So if you are somebody who really, really wants to get in on this and you are experiencing financial hardship for whatever reason, then send me an email. And I'm sure that I can't get to everybody, but um, 
the other thing that I'm that I'm going to have set up is what I'm calling a good neighbor fund. And so if there are people out there who are financially still financially stable and would like to contribute to uh, scholarships for for students who would like to get in on these courses, uh, then that's an option too. And, you know, especially with unemployment numbers hitting 36 million this week, uh, mm. you know, there's there's a huge need for this information and I don't want to exclude people with a financial hardship because yeah. I know what that's like. And so at any rate, so one seat in each seminar will be given away to somebody who is experiencing financial hardship. And then I will have a good neighbor fund for those uh, who would like to contribute to future scholarships. Excellent. So courses.mereliberty.com, or if you just go to mereliberty.com, you can get it. You can get a link from there. And I would also encourage people to follow Carrie on Facebook. And where, where else are you where people can follow you? Um, let's see. I'm on Facebook. I'm send, sometimes on Twitter. <laughs> I the cesspool, did, you sometimes dip your toe in the cesspool. Yes, just to remind them that the, it's a cesspool. But <laughs> <laughs> um, at any rate, I did finally start an account on Minds, and uh, I also started a Mere Liberty discussion group on Minds. Um, so that's an option. Um, that's Minds, as in like m i n d s dot com. Yes, yeah. Minds. Okay. Minds dot com. Yeah. And, oh, the other thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, graduates of these courses who demonstrate an excellent understanding of the Socratic method can actually apply with me to become Socratic coaches themselves, and then they can um, they can be a coach on my platform and start earning a little extra money, too. There's actually one of the things that I love about Socratic method is that you can use it for all kinds of subject areas. So mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to get a, a coach to actually do mathematics by Socratic seminar. Hmm. So uh, at any rate, that's going to be um, that's going to be something that that is available to to graduates. Cool. Well thanks for being on the show here, Carrie, and promoting this. And yeah, uh, everybody go to mirrorliberty.com. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Libertarian Christian Podcast. If you liked today's episode, we encourage you to rate us on Apple Podcasts to help expand our audience. If you want to reach out to us, email us at podcast at libertarianchristians.com. You can also reach us at LCI Official on Twitter. And of course, we are on Facebook and have an active group you are welcome to join. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. The Libertarian Christian Podcast is a project of the Libertarian Christian Institute, a registered 501c3 nonprofit. If you'd like to find out more about LCI, visit us on the web at libertarianchristians.com. The voiceovers are by Matt Bellis and Catherine Williams. As of episode 115, our audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com. Hey, podcast listeners. Since you like listening to audio content, we wanted to let you know about a new audiobook titled Called to Freedom, Why You Can Be Christian and Libertarian. It's read by me, Jacqueline Isaacs, one of the contributing authors of the book, and every download helps to support the Libertarian Christian Institute. To learn more and to download the audiobook today, go to calltofreedombook.com.